Hi, teacher. Hello. Good evening. Well, guys, uh, welcome once again to the class. It is already time to start the class. It is eight o'clock. So welcome to you once again to another day of these classes. I don't know if the other ones are going to connect today, but if they are not, we're just going to wait just one more minute. Because as you know, we just have one hour, so we have to take advantage of this hour. So uh, yesterday we left the last exercise and uh, I didn't know if you worked on that because I mean, let me see. All right, so I got it right here. Perfect. So um, as I was saying, we had the last exercise that it was actually this one and uh, that we could have completed yesterday. And I don't know if you worked on that guys. Were you able to do something, to complete something, or to work on this? Yes, teacher. Or? Yes, right. complete, teacher. Okay, perfect. So <laughs> in this case, well, I don't know, as I said, the other ones are going to connect today, but we're going to start the class because we just have one hour. And today we just have most of the class of today going to be about some vocabulary that we're going to learn, but it's also really important. So um, if you already worked on that, so I will need your help. In this case, uh, Lisette, can you help me with number one? And Catherine with number two, please. Uh, number one, she is sometimes layers. 
She is sometimes late. Okay, very good. Number two. My sister never early up on Sunday. Can you repeat it again? My sister never early oops get on Sunday. All right. Teacher, I said, yeah, my sister never get up early on Sunday. Yeah, like that. So it is my sister never gets up early on Sundays. Okay. But thank you so much, Catherine. So, uh, Beatrice, can you help me with number three? Kelia with number four, Tatiana with number five, Angelica with number six, and the last one, Hazel with number seven. Good night. Um, he usually to go to cinema on fr Fridays. Mm. There's one word that is not in the right place. Can you repeat it again? Uh, he usually to goes mm -hmm. on Friday to cinema. Does any one of you guys have something different to what she said? Uh, he usually goes to cinema on Friday. Exactly. The word too, uh, Beatriz, you were using the word or the preposition to in the grown place. So it shouldn't be there. So okay. it was, he usually goes to the cinema on Fridays. Okay. okay. So number four. How often do you go mm -hmm. to a restaurant? How often do you go no, no, to a yes. resta restaurant? Yeah, it is like that. How often do you go to a restaurant? Very good. So number five. They always go to the beach in the summer. She always goes to the beach in the summer. Very good. Thank you. Number six. She sometimes does her shopping on Friday. Very good. She sometimes does her shopping on Fridays. Very good. And the last one. We go to the theater twice a month. Very good. Very, very good. So was it that complicated, guys, the adverse of frequency? Was it difficult for you? No? Sí, bastante. Was it? So um, I, I wanted to ask you, do you remember that yesterday I told you that I was going to ask you about the topic that you would like me to reinforce. So right now I'm going to ask for your opinions and I will see which topic would you like me to reinforce. Just let me open up some notes so I can take some notes. Let me see. Perfect. So I got it right here. So um, I will start with Monica Calderon. Uh, as I told you yesterday, I wanted you to look for a topic that you didn't understand that well. So together we were going to see which one you didn't. So I told you yesterday that the one that got the most votes, it will be the one that we will have at the last class. So Monica, which one it was for you? The most difficult one or the one that you would like me to reinforce? Um, I'll be honest with you. 
and uh, mm -hmm. I studied English before. I understand almost what you can say. And uh, we, the topics, we learn. So, um, so, so let me understand, you understand that. Me. So you understand or you understood everything. So there's no any topic that you will allow me to reinforce. Yes. Okay. I mean, more vocabulary or learn more English. But all right. I understand all the topics. All right, cool. No problem. Lisette, what about you? Lisette? Hello? Yes, what about you? Uh, I difficult in the structure of the question. Okay. All right, so let me see Beatriz in your case. My problem is um, questions uh, for oh, we or why? Oh, WH questions. Okay. Yo me confundo. All right. Pero ajá, tengo que memorizar yo. All right, no problem. So let me see. Um, Hazel, what about you? Is there something that you would like me to reinforce or not? Para mí quizás lo más difícil ha sido la parte de cuando ocupamos este verbos in tercera persona. Okay. Que hay que agregarle el es, todavía no sé en cuáles sí y en cuáles no. Okay, simple present in this case. Okay, what about Pero you? Pero en tercera persona. Okay, great. So what about you, Mr. Mario? Un poco lo de ayer. Y lo de eh, son, many, Eso como que me cuesta un poquito. Okay, Eric. Hello, good evening. Good evening. So in your case? Hello. Hello. Well, I don't know what happened. Can you guys hear me? Yes, teacher. Yes. So probably Eric couldn't hear what I said. Please so repeat, teacher. No, I was asking about the topics or the mo the most difficult topic for you, so we can try to reinforce that. Which was for you? Um, and in uses adverbs. Adverbs. Yeah, okay. All right, cool. Uh, Tatiana. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. In your case? Eh, quizás nomás en las estructuras. And también en some, some, any. Y un poquito en lo de ayer nomás. Okay, and other words. Okay, Roxana. Hello, teacher. Hello. El tema de ayer, sí, me cuesta bastante. Okay, adverbs of frequency. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sí, el son, el y todo eso. 
Very good. Monica Escobar, in your case. Why did I? Okay. Is there? A mí me cuesta bastante countable e eh, incountable. Okay, countable. Okay, and can me see. Thank you, Monica. Kelia. What about you, Kelia? Hello. Hello. Hello, teacher. Um, incountable, incountable, because the chicken. Um, no, it's not clear para mí ahora both o cómo se dice dos que los dos both uh -huh. so okay I will take that uh, Angelica uh, maybe the uncountable and countable things I don't understand okay and for you Catherine Um, difficult and W and some any mm -hmm. y estru estructurar exactamente las oraciones con All lo right. de ayer. Okay. Después, después de los adverbios, eh, estructurar es difficult un poco. Okay, very good. So I think, uh, well. I see the most of you guys have some, or the majority of you have some problems with the adverbs of frequency and with countable and uncountable nouns. That when we say countable and uncountable, there we can also see some, any, a, and, so everything will be together in that part. So uh, I see the most of you have problems of that. So I will let you know which, or in this case, I think that we are going to cover both of them in the last class so we can reinforce that. Okay, so thank you so much guys for letting me know the topics where you got some problems. So I will try to, to see how can we, or how we can improve with that part, okay? So, but for today guys, or today's class, it's going to be like, some vocabulary. Today we're going to learn some vocabulary about sports. Today we're going to see different type of sports that we have in English and the, um, the correct use that we need to do when it comes to grammar. Because um, most of the time uh, we just see or we just know the vocabulary, but we don't know how to use uh, or how to use them when it comes to grammar. But we are going to learn that today. So to start with that, we have a, a like a little meaning or a brief detail of that. And we have some examples right there. So I would like, Angelica, can you please help me reading this part? Okay, what is a sport? Sport or sports? is all forms of usually competitive physical activity, which through casual or organized participation aim to use, maintain or improve physical ability and skills while providing entertainment to participants. And in some case, cases, spectators. All right, Angelica, very good pronunciation actually. That was very, very good. There were some words that they were not pronounced well, but in general, very good pronunciation. So um, as you can see there, it says that sports, it is something that we use to like competitive physical activities or participation that help us to improve our physical activity or ability or to get some skills, right? Because when we learn a, a new um, sport, it helps us to get some kind of ability. Because, you know, uh, there are some sports that are very competitive. And these sports, they, you will need to use your mind and obviously your whole body. 
So we have some examples right here, like synchronized swimming, nado sincronizado, and sliding. I don't, I don't even know. It is actually, I just have seen this type of sport. Solo he visto este tipo de deportes in movies. But I don't really know what that is. For me, it's like, like similar to skin, but with a with a kind of kind of furniture. I don't know what that is, but you got the idea. That's why I got the picture right there, so you can have any idea about what that sport is. It is most of the time. It is very common in some places where um, there's a lot of snow or they have uh, like very cold weather but it is not very common sport. But we are going to see today uh, the ways or the verbs that you need to use. For example, we have uh, the verb, oh, can you see what the verb is? Yeah, play, right? So the verb play, we have three verbs that we are going to use when it comes to sports. So the first one, it is the verb play. The verb play, it says that we are generally going to use them with team sports. And those sports that need ball or similar object. What does that mean? Que el verbo play lo vamos a utilizar cuando los deportes sean de equipo o aquellos deportes que necesitan un, una bola o un objeto para jugarse. So, uh, for example, I can say, uh, as an example, Mario likes to play basketball. This is just an example. So, or, or I can say, Catherine likes plays to play baseball. So this verb, the verb play, is going to be used with those sports that need a ball or a similar object, okay? Such as puck, disc, or shuttlecock, or those activities in which two people or teams compete against each other. So el verbo play lo vamos a utilizar cuando sean en equipos, y cuando haya como una competencia entre equipos, right? So this is the first verb that we are going to use with some of the sports. Remember, the verb play is only going to be used with team sports. And when the sport requires an object to be played or a ball, in this case, that is the most common one. What about the following? or the next one. In the next one, we have the verb go. So we are going to use this verb when um, with activities or sports that ends in ing. The verb go here implies that we go somewhere to practice this sport. So for example, if I say, uh, I go swimming, I go hiking, or she goes bowling, she goes or he goes fishing, they go skiing, or they go jogging. So this verb is going to be the main one or the one that we're going to use when it comes to the um, sports that end with the ing for. Obviously, we also have some exceptions when it comes to the usage, but we will see the exceptions later on. So right now, this is like the general information that we have. So we can know what, when you see a, a, a sport that ends with the ING form, you know that, that in that case, you will need to use uh, the verb go. So, the next verb that we are going to use is do. We can say that do is going to be used with recreational activities, with individual non-team sports or sports in which a ball is not used. Like martial arts, for example, do a crossword puzzle. So 
let's understand that the verb do lo vamos a utilizar cuando no hayan equipos o cuando estos deportes no contengan el uso de una bola, sino que generalmente sean como con el cuerpo, right? So we are going to say do karate, do judo, do kung fu, do aerobics, do ballet, do yoga, or do gymnastics. So this verb, we are going to use them with those type of sports. So remember, number one, the verb play. Number two, the verb go. And number three, the verb do. These three verbs are going to be used as auxiliaries when we are talking about sports, only when we talk about sports. Not another thing, just for sports. Keep that in mind. So as I told you at the very beginning, we have some exceptions, right? And we need to pay attention to those exceptions. Why? Because in this case, the exceptions that we have, we need to memorize them in order for you to remember how to use them. So the first one that we have, it says that we are going to use the verb do, as we know, we're going to use this when, um, when we have uh, the sports that ends in the ing form. So, and because they do not imply moving along other activities and in the ing. But for example, when it comes to the sport golf, even though, aunque sabemos que golf no termina con ing, En este caso, sí podemos utilizar eh, un verbo diferente. Example, for the sport golf, if there's an idea of competition, we are going to use the verb play. So, en este caso, si, se, si estamos hablando del el deporte golf y sabemos que es una competencia de golf, en este caso vamos a decir play golf. Pero si sabemos que, digamos, alguien va a jugar golf solo con su amigo o amiga, sin el hecho de competencia, sino que solo hacerlo por jugar y desestresarse, or in this case for pleasure, we are going to use the verb go. So remember, this is the exception. If there is a competition about golf, we are going to use the verb play play golf, but if there's no competition and you are just playing the game or the sport with someone just to have fun, just to have, or to do it for pleasure, in that case, you are going to use the verb go and you will have to add the ing at the end. Porque recuérdese que con el verbo go vamos a tener que poner el deporte en ing. So we have an example. We can say Tiger Woods plays golf. Or we can say we'll go golfing at the weekend. Do you understand the difference, guys? Is there any question or something that you didn't understand at this moment? Let me know so I can explain you. Solamente ese deporte tiene esa... Exactly. This, this is the only exception that we have. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other question or is everything clear? Teacher, mm -hmm. I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, uh, the bear play and do and go when uh, is auxiliary or what is the name? Sí, sería, eh, not exactly with other verb, porque en este caso eh, son deportes. Son utilizados ah, okay. como, como auxiliares para el deporte. Uh, ok. Uh -huh. 
Thanks. Okay, you're welcome. So any other question, guys? If there's no questions, I'm going to move forward. Teacher. Yes, go ahead. Um, do. No entendí exactamente cómo usarlo. Do. In this case, do lo vamos a utilizar solo con aquellos deportes que no se juegan en equipo o deportes en los cuales no es necesario ningún material extra. Es decir, una bola, un, un bate, deportes únicamente que son con el cuerpo, deportes que hacemos con nuestro cuerpo. Es, en ese momento vamos a utilizar do. Por ejemplo, ahí tenemos karate, karate, judo, kung fu, aerobics, ballet, yoga, and gymnastics. Those type of sports, aunque nosotros sabemos en nuestro o en, o en general, nosotros sabemos que, por ejemplo, si decimos ballet, ese es un, podríamos decir lo que es, se juega en en, en en un team, ¿no? Porque hay varios. Pero en realidad, quien está desempeñándose en ese momento solo es una persona. Aunque hay varios, pero cada uno se desempeña de forma individual. Es por eso que es puesto en esa, en esa parte. Y no necesitan de algo extra. Son algo que tú haces with your own body. So it's there when we are going to use do. And as it says right there. In, este, in this case. Uh -huh. Uh, aplica swimming. No. ¿Por qué? Porque como lleva swimming con ING, todos aquellos que lleven ING al final van con el verbo go. O sea que todos los que terminen en ING, todos los deportes, cuando si terminan en ING, por ley, tiene que llevar el go. Go, exacto. Y, teacher, um, el go va a ir antes del deporte o después del deporte? Antes. Todos van a ir antes. antes. Todos. Por ejemplo, play basketball, play baseball, go swimming, go hiking, go bowling, do karate, go, or do aerobics, do ballet. Todos van a ir antes. Because they are used as auxiliaries of the sport. Thank you. Okay. So any other question, guys? No? Well, if there's no questions, we are going to move. Uh, en esquí, uh -huh. vi que tiene doble, doble I. Ski? Ski. Let me see. This one right here? No. Wow. Es esquí. No, I don't know where that is. Next. In go. In go. No, see. go. Hey. Yeah, this is. Five. Esquí. ¿Qué es Skin. eso? Oh, esquiar. <laughs> sí, esquiar. Y... Sin el ING sería S-K-I-E. No. Ski, con I nada más. ¿Y por qué no se le quita la, una I? En en this se case, la... yeah, I, I know that it might be, or it might be kind of confusing, but uh, some rules sí. of the, or some grammatical rules allow you to, or this is kind of an exception when it comes to grammar, and you can only, because el, el verbo ya tienes la I, entonces, to make, to make it in phonetic, phoneticamente, skin. So, um, es, es como algo simplemente de fonética. That's why we put a double, double E right there, double I, I'm sorry, right there. So I know that you might be asking yourself like, but that's not possible. Because if there's already a letter I over there, you just have to add NG and that will be automatically ING, right? But this yeah. is just for phonetical purposes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. 
So here we have like uh, some of the common sports or this is actually a part of the vocabulary that we're, we're going to see today. We have football. In this case, we know that the American football, it's completely different than the, the football that we know in El Salvador, right? That might be soccer though, because in the States, they have the differences between soccer and football. For them, football, it is this sport. It's completely different than soccer. Y aquí en El Salvador, a los dos le dicen fútbol. Eh, ¿Qué? A fútbol le llamamos también a esto, o hay veces es raro que le llamen soccer, pero es porque hemos adaptado la palabra del inglés a, al deporte. Pero en realidad sería, va, eh, no, no hay una traducción literal para nuestro idioma, sino que adaptamos eh, esa palabra. But in English, it's completely different. They have the differences. Football is going to be this. And soccer is going to be the one that we know in El Salvador. So football, volleyball, basketball, soccer. We have handball. This sport is not commonly used or it is not that common, at least in our country, right? But in some other countries, it's very, very common. So we, got, we have kickboxing, we have martial arts. When we say martial arts, it involves Kung Fu, it involves Karari, it involves Taekwondo, Martial arts, it is the general part of that. But within martial arts, there's a lot of sub, uh, subcategories, right? So we have the ping pong. This sport is not also that common in, at least in our country, but in some other countries, such as the States or any other country in Europe, they are very common. So it is very important that you that you know. So we have baseball, we have bowling, we have billiards, we have golf. Those sports, the, the most common that we have in El Salvador, it is baseball. Bowling, not a lot of people practices that. Billiard, probably, but golf. No, it is kind of kind of in a different area, but not in El Salvador. So we have boxing, cricket, equestrian. This equestrian, it is not also common in El Salvador as well because they go to competitions and things like that. We have uh, fencing as well. This one, it is not common in El Salvador, but in, in another country, yes, it is. We have uh, gymnastics. We have a badminton. We have tennis. We have high jump. We have a wrestling. Wrestling. We have sumo. I heard someone said something. Any question? Wrestling. Mm -hmm. como, es como viene siendo como karate, algo así. Similar. No, no, no. Wrestling eh, es, es un deporte, es como similar a la fuerza, fuerza, ¿cómo le llamamos? Fuerza bruta. Judo. Like what? Como lucha de Similar al judo, no. No, no, no. Es, es como, no es como lucha tampoco, es simplemente, eh, es como una competencia de peso, de, de fuerza, en el que únicamente se dejan guiar por la fuerza a quien baja al oponente más rápido solamente con su peso. Nada de pegarse, nada de golpearse, nada de eso. Simplemente fuerza, pura fuerza bruta. Ah, uh, ok. Thank you. All right. 
So this one right here, sumo, this sport, most of the time, they use it or it is very common in Asia because I think that it was there that the beginning of this sport, it was in Asia. So it's not that common or we didn't know that much this, um, this sport. Cycling, obviously we all know how to cycle, right? It is very, very common. So we have a car racing, this sport, I know that there's a place in El Salvador. Um, how do they call them? But there's a place for car racing in El Salvador. Javali. Oh, exactly, that place. I didn't remember the name, but there, that Javali, it's a place where it exists, this sport, or people can go there just to have some fun with, um, with some friends, and you can see this, or you can practice this sport but it's not that common in El Salvador. So, or not that much people pay attention to this. So we have a uh, hard less, uh, javelin, those uh, sports are not common as well. Long jump, well, I don't know, probably, but some of you probably know them or probably you, you have a friend who practices this type of sports. But in my experience, I don't know that much about those, those sports. Sorry. So running, water polo, water skiing, speed skating, archery, screw, diving, surfing, and swimming. We have bobsled, ice hockey, ice skating, and ski. So um, let me see. Yes, ski. Oh, all right. So these are the most common sports, guys, that we have. Um, they are not like there's no that much information because we just have a list of sports as you can see right here there's uh like what 20 25 different sports that we have around the world or that some people around the world might practice so that's pretty much the vocabulary that we are going to have for today and of course some of the rules that we saw about the auxiliary verbs that you are going to use when it comes to sports. So I would like to ask you before we go to the practice, is there any question or something that you would like to know before going to the practice? So if there's not, if there is not, we're going to go to the practice and you know what you have to do, right? You just have to take a screenshot or to take a picture of this. And we are going to practice what just we saw, like the use of the word play, go or do. Okay, so let me know when you're done so I can move to the next part. Yeah, teacher. Can I move now? Yes. Okay, and this part. And this part, what I want you to do is just to find the seven. That's why we have the number seven right here. The seven differences between picture number, picture letter A and picture letter B. So you will need to find the seven differences that are in these two pictures. 
Is it done? Yeah, teacher. And that's it. So, um, we are 14 today, let me see. Okay, cool. All right, so go ahead and join your groups. So I will be checking one by one to see how well are you doing. De la, de la oración. Ah, ok. Entonces, entonces el uno sería Place. Place. Ok. Bueno, play. Sí. My Number sister two. likes to play. Sí. Number two es do, ¿verdad? Do. Uh -huh. Sí. Number three. My cousin likes to play. To do. Number four. No creo que en, en el del boxing es do. Porque es la, la, la única to, que... Uh,
Yo creo que es play. No, pero si no se usa bo, ajá, si no, el play dijo que tú, no es una pelota, sino que es como a... algo que usan, pero es en equipo. Uh -huh. Sí, en equipo individual, pero si no es una pelota, por mí sería tú. Tú. Pero tú dijo que también era solo sí, cuando... para cosas del cuerpo. Solo del cuerpo, play. Uh -huh. es... okay, para mí play. es play. No está bien, está mal. <risa> ok. Eh, next part. Pero uh, ahí no vamos a poner los números también. Acá. Lo que están haciendo. Ajá. Uh -huh. Las acciones. Ah. Sí, me... Tienen espacio en blanco abajo. La cosa es que esto no me va a dar para para ponerlo pero no que no es lo mismo de las de las respuestas sí, el las número preguntas. el número yo entendería, hay que poner. yo entendería que igual el número pero o en todo caso no sería play o Uh -huh. Dice, uh, uh -huh. with play from the, the right in number. Ah, no, no, hay que tener el número. Es ah. la uno donde están las muchachas, tres. Es la uno sería. Uh -huh. Y la diez. La diez sería. ¿Cuál hay tú? Ahí sería do, pienso yo. Y Broming. Bromington, ¿qué es? Um, Bromington After School. Um, ¿Cómo? Teacher, what means badminton? Badminton es un deporte, deporte que juega casi solo la realeza. Son como unas cositas que parecen como como tapón con plumitas y que se juega como con raqueta. Oh. Uh -huh. Ah, pues sería play. Uh. No, para mí sería tú. No sé si estoy equivocado. ¿no? Remember the things by do. We use it with recreational sports or a sport that not use any different material such as balls or any other different material do we use it for activities or sports that are most of the time with the body ¿En cuál? Está siempre en la primera línea, hacia abajo, en medio. Sí, de oh, aquí, yeah. después va a Heavy ping pong.
जब यू गोल्फ गोल्फ वाल्फ
Okay, guys, I think that you, well, did you complete them all? Were you able to complete them all? Yes, teacher. Okay, perfect. Yes, teacher. So in the first exercise, we are going to see how well you understand the part of the play, go, or do. So. Let me see. I will need the, let me see. Um, hey, Cell, who were you working with? Uh, Eric Ramirez. Mm -hmm. he, I don't remember. So your group in Tatiana general. Tatiana and Catherine. Yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. So in this case, your group is going to resolve exercise number one. You decide who is going to be the first one, who the second one, it's up to you. So go ahead, show me your answers or show me what you got. One, my sister likes to play volleyball after school. Very good, yes. Next. Mm -hmm. Thomas usually go horse riding on Saturday morning. Okay, very good. I see that you use the verb go, but because we have the third person, tenemos la tercera persona, que es Thomas. Yes. So it's going to be goes. I goes. So Tom's usually goes horse riding on Saturday morning. Go ahead. Yes. Mm -hmm. My cousin likes to go boxing to keep fit. En este caso ya no va a ser necesario <laughs> modificar el verbo. Que está en likes. Porque ya está likes. Correct. Okay. But very good. So the next one. It's fun to play ping pong. It's also uh -huh. call it table tennis. Very table good. Tennis. Table tennis. Okay. Play ping pong. Very good. Next one. That. Do archery at the country club. Club. Mm -hmm. Is that right, guys? Does any of you have something different? Die. Does. Does. Dad does <laughs> archery at the country club. Very good. So the next one. Um, I'm Mary lost to go ice skating with her friends. Very good. Goes. Go. I'm sorry. No. In that case, it's not goes. It is go. Because we already modified the verb love. So in este caso solo es go. Go. Aunt Mary loves to go ice skiing. skiing. Very good. So number seven. My neighbor's tree. My neighbor's tree. Uh -huh. Wrestling athletes once a, a week. Okay, very good. What about the other ones, guys? Eric, Hazel, only Catherine is saying that. So what it, about you guys? It's going to go swimming uh -huh. 
on a hot day. Very good. Yes, go swimming. Mm -hmm. I like to go bowling with my friends on Saturdays. Okay, cool. Very good. And the last one? We practice a lot of uh, sport in our family. We like to play badminton after school. Very good. Play badminton. So I think that the images down below, uh, probably you already understand what they are. So uh, what you needed to do is just to put the, the number, but if you complete the part number one, so it's the same thing. So let me see. Um, let me see, Mr. Mario, your group. So it was only you and another girl, right? Mm, no, no, me, no recuerdo. <laughs> oh my God, sir. So I guess. Eso le was, la voz. I guess it was Heidi, but I'm not sure. But go ahead, sir. How many sports did you find? Eh, seis, el de la raqueta roja, no sé cómo se llama. Entonces, no, ese no, no. No sé cuál es el nombre de eso. Usamos, eh, encontré ping pong, pero ese de la raqueta roja, no sé qué es. That, no tengo si lo encontré. I think ¿Cómo? that's ping pong as well, isn't it? Eh, ping pong no es el de las raquetas azules. Actually. <laughs> y that... la roja, no sé qué es. All right, so let me see how many you got. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, volleyball está en la segunda línea. Yeah, I can see it right here. Volleyball. Yes, this one right here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Tennis está en la... Yeah, this one right en la here. Séptima, en la séptima columna. Okay. Yeah, I can see it. Got it. Uh, mm -hmm. En la última columna está bowling. Bowling. Arriba. En la última columna. Esquina oh, yeah. dere superior derecha. Yeah, I see it. Bowling. Ahí está. Bowling. Ok. Uh -huh. eh, en la sexta línea está soccer. Oh, yeah. Basketball, I see at the bottom. Soccer. Okay. Soccer en la sexta línea. ¿Dónde está la S? Oh, sexta I see línea. it right here. Soccer. soccer. Ok. okay. Ping pong está en la right primera here. línea. Ping ah, pong. Sí, ok. Sí. Yes. Abajo de ping pong, al llegar a la G, está golf. Inclinada también. Golf. Oh, yeah. I see it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Eh, más abajo, donde termina ping pong, arriba está la B de béisbol. Yeah, I see it. Béisbol. No, ese es básquet. El béisbol está arriba. Yeah, ese, right. Ese. Ok, uh -huh. very good. Yeah. Uh, you found like the six ones. I don't even know what this little red thing was, but at least you got most of them, the ones that I got here on my notes. So that, that was very, very good. Very good job, okay. sir. So I don't okay. know who the lady was. I think that it was Heidi, but I'm not pretty sure. So let me see, um, Beatrice, your group. Eh, Roxana y no sé qué. So, just tell me where the differences are. Uh, la pelota. La pelota. One, la camisa okay. del árbitro. Two, ok. La calcetín corto. Ok. La pantalla del El los, marcador. La, okay. la marcador. Yeah, very good. Four. Los pies del... Que va marcando la pelota. Five. Los calcetines. Uh -huh. Five. The socks. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. La camisa Six. de un jugador uh -huh. que es vertical y horizontal. Oh, ok, yeah, very good. Six and seven. Ok, this should be. This should be the, the seven one. See, one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. Those are the seven ones. Ok. Yes. Okay, perfect. So thank you so much, guys. So let me tell you, tomorrow there's no class because we have Independence Day. So uh, there's no class for tomorrow. It is our holiday. 
So um, we will have classes until Thursday, okay? So Thursday, it will be pretty much like our la penultima, so our pretty much the last class. So on Monday, it will be the last class that we will have. So solo nos vamos a ver Thursday and Monday. That will be our last class. Please, guys, if you haven't finished the platform yet, that means that if you did not complete the platform, you are not going to the next level. So es necesario que ustedes completen la plataforma a un nivel de 80% para poder eh, ir al siguiente nivel y obtener el pase libre. Si todavía no la completan en este tiempo, puede ser que puedan tener algún tipo de problema para poder eh, hacer la inscripción para el próximo. So, but if you already did it, haga caso mismo a lo que estoy diciendo and just keep, uh, keep doing what you're doing. So, happy Independence Day and see you till Thursday, okay? Good night, guys. Good night. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.